Hey kia ora MCBC whanau, Troy here and I'm so stoked that you could join us for church online this week. Why don't you kick back, relax, uh, grab your cup of coffee or your cup of tea because uh, this service is going to be amazing. First up we wanted to share this incredible video uh, called The Blessing Aotearoa. It's a beautiful depiction of the church coming together and singing and declaring God's blessing over us as a church and over us as a nation. You'll get to even see uh, some MCBC folk in there too. Uh, so before we get into the video, I'm going to read the priestly blessing from Numbers 6. The Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron and his sons, This is how you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Say they will, so they will put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them.
May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations in your family and your children and their children and their children. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. May his favor be upon you. Hallelujah, <laughs> Father, what an incredibly powerful song. And to know that that has been sung not only over our nation, but over nations of this world, we just say yes and amen to all that song declares. Yes and amen to all that song brings us. And Lord, right now, we would pray from Scripture. We would pray, Lord, that you would bless us and protect us. That you would smile on this nation and be gracious to us. Lord, we pray you would show us your favor and you would give us your peace. And Lord, I love how in Isaiah 59 it says, And this is my covenant with them, says the Lord. My spirit will not leave them and neither will these lips I have given you. They will be on your lips and on the lips of your children and your children's children forever. I, the Lord, have spoken. And Lord, we pray this too. We pray that your spirit will not leave us and our children's children. And we pray your words will always be on our lips 
and on the lips of our children's children. We pray these promises, we pray these scriptures over us, over our nation and over our world. In Jesus' name, Amen. Uh, kia ora church, it's Marty here. Great to be with you again, although I'd love to be with you in person. Hey, tomorrow we have a, a, an important breakthrough in lockdown. We go down a level to level two tomorrow, and it's really exciting for us. Um, but it doesn't mean that we can meet together just yet. So we're waiting for the next government announcement, and hopefully that will mean that we can gather in groups of up to 100. Um, at that stage, we'll let you know of all the different ministries starting up at, and when we can gather in those groups. And so uh, we'll keep you in the loop. So just keep an ear out on Facebook or your emails. And um, yeah, we want to just... Yeah, we're looking forward to meeting with you guys again, and uh, there's nothing that's quite like it. In the meantime, maybe you should check out the church website, so that's been updated, in case you spend a bit of time on that, and it's looking awesome. And so there's a great space for you to go, there's a whole heap of resources on there, there's stuff that's useful for you and for others. So go have a look at it, and maybe share it with some friends. At this stage, we want to say thank you just to everyone who's continued to... Um, do their offerings and their tithes at this time and uh, for us as a church we can't function without that and yeah we just want to say a huge thank you we're really appreciative of it it means we can still function it means our ministries can still work uh, and we can still do the things that God is calling us to do in our community so we want to encourage you to do that uh, you can do that by online bank transfer and that's pretty much the only way at the moment uh, but we want to just yeah just encourage you to to really ask what God's wanting you to do specifically in that area Next week's a special service for us. Next week is Blokes Church and in the annual calendar, that's one that we always look forward to. And next week is no different. It's going to be online, but we've got some stuff in store that hopefully you will just really enjoy. And so we've got a few ideas. Maybe you want to just drive your car into your lounge next week. Maybe kids and you want to go and get yourself some Lego. That's going to be really useful. And... When you're doing the shopping, when you click and collect, maybe put some of these on the list because we'd love to have pies together after the service, keep some traditions going. So that's Blokes Church next week. Really looking forward to it. Can't wait to see you there. Invite some significant blokes. Just to let you know a few things that are happening in church care. So Paul Huswick and Jeremiah Glassie have both been in hospital this week and we'd love uh, for you just to continue to pray for them and their families and their families just really appreciate that at this time. Uh, it's a hard time for people to be in hospital because they can't have visitors. So um, yeah, just thank you for the support that we have seen you show to them and continue to show to each other. I love that we as a church can care for each other well. And it's amazing what difference just a text message or a phone call can make to somebody. So uh, keep doing it, you guys are awesome. And also just, just a shout out to uh, those who've been sewing face masks this week. So uh, we made over 100 face masks for our seniors and we're super excited to hand those out. So a big thank you to everyone who's taken part in that, especially Marie Ram who made over 60 just by herself. So awesome effort. So this week we want to celebrate some wedding anniversaries. So congratulations to Elizabeth and Vinesh Kumaran. Four years, awesome guys. Dion and Rachel Keating, you guys are up to nine years, so awesome stuff there. And John and Tanya topping us off this week with 17 years, so congratulations to you guys. Grab yourself a crunchy bar, maybe work out the best way to go and celebrate as a couple and, and lock down level two, but have a great week and have a great celebration. Also just birthdays this week, if it's your birthday, grab yourself some, some treat and I know there's some special and big numbers out there this week, so congratulations to all of you guys. But because I can, I'm just going to do a quick shout out to Levi. So Levi, happy birthday, mate. You're going to have an awesome birthday tomorrow. We love you heaps and have a little party. That's what we're going to do, buddy. We're going to have a little party. Hey, uh, that's it from me. We're going to go and see what the kids uh, have got for us now. So uh, tune into this. Enjoy. Have a great rest of the service. Miss you guys heaps. See you soon. Hey kids, welcome back to church at your place. Hope you've had a great week. Have you been able to find ways to show others your love for God and your love for others? I love seeing the finger puppets you made. Thanks for sharing your photos. Zach, you managed to get your dad to make some with you. Great hairstyle. Love those facials. That's a cool coat. What a handful. Now, it's story time. Stories of the Bible. 
Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love. He did many miracles and healed people of their sickness. Jesus had a friend named Lazarus who was very sick. <coughs> he had two sisters named Mary That's okay. and Martha Here you go. who sent a message to Jesus telling him, Lord, your dear friend is very sick. So come on. But when Jesus heard about it, he said, Lazarus's sickness will not end in death. No, it happened for the glory of God. Uh, what? So although Jesus loved Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, he stayed where he was for the next two days. All right, I shall go. Finally, he said to his disciples, let's go back to Judea. Uh, are you sure? But his disciples did not think this was a good idea because the people in Judea had tried to kill Jesus. But Jesus told them they were going anyway. He said, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but now I will go and wake him up. Eh, yeah, me okay. The disciples thought Jesus meant Lazarus was simply sleeping. So Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. What? And for your sakes, I'm glad I wasn't there. For now you will really believe. Come, let's go see him. Thomas said to his fellow disciples, Let's go too and die with Jesus. When Jesus arrived at Bethany, he was told that Lazarus had already been in his grave for four days. Many people had come to be with Mary and Martha because their brother had died. When Martha got word that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus told her, your brother will rise again. Yes, Martha said, he will rise when everyone else rises at the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Do you believe this, Martha? Yes, Lord, she told him. I have always believed you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Then she returned to Mary. She told Mary, the teacher is here and wants to see you. So Mary immediately went to him. When the people who were at the house consoling Mary saw her leave so hastily, they assumed she was going to Lazarus's grave to weep. Oh, let's go too. So they followed her there. When Mary arrived and saw Jesus, she said, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and saw the other people wailing with her, a deep anger welled up within him. Where have you put him? He asked them. They told him, Lord, come and see. Then Jesus wept. The people who were standing nearby said, see how much he loved him? But some said, this man healed a blind man. Couldn't he have kept Lazarus from dying? Jesus was still angry and he arrived at the tomb, rolled the stone aside. Jesus told them. Wait, hold on, Jesus! But Martha protested, Lord, he has been dead for four days. The smell will be terrible. Jesus said, Didn't I tell you that you would see God's glory if you believe? Go ahead. So they rolled the stone aside. Then Jesus said, Father, thank you for hearing me. You always hear me. But I said it out loud for the sake of all these people standing here so they will believe you sent me. Then Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come out! And Lazarus came out, his hands, feet, and head wrapped in cloth. Uh -huh. Jesus told them, unwrap him and let him go. Wahoo! Many of the Jews who were there believed in Jesus, for he had raised Lazarus from the dead. notice in there that Jesus said that he was the resurrection and the life. Most of us know what the word life means, but what does the word resurrection mean? What does it mean when Jesus said he's the resurrection? Perhaps after the service you could ask a grown-up that question. Now, what you're going to do while the sermon's on today? I thought it might be quite fun to bring Lazarus to life yourself. 
So all you need, quite simply, is a paper cup and a popsicle stick or an ice block stick and a picture that you've drawn of Lazarus. If you don't have those, you can just quite simply grab a toilet roll, put a piece of paper on the bottom and then attach a picture of Lazarus to a pencil and you can do exactly the same thing. Have fun creating it and please send us the photos. See ya! Kia ora te whanau. my name is Arnie, the lead pastor here at Monaco City Baptist Church. It's so good having you join us today. So we're actually coming to the conclusion today of our First Corinthians series. And in this First Corinthians series, we've just encouraged you to see every part of life through the Gospels. And that's what Paul does. He consistently does something through First Corinthians. He challenges us to define the problem that we have but then to respond to it by looking through the gospel and what the gospel has to say about whatever problem we're talking about. And those problems can be anything. It can be in our relationships, in our community, in our family, and in our work. So Paul has been building and building, and today we reach the, the climax and the fulfillment of where he's been aiming with, with this book. So I'm really excited about what we've got ahead today. So he's going to tell us about the key that we need. And so Troy's going to do our Bible reading. So let's listen out for the key that Paul is talking about. Cue Troy. Thanks, mate. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel, you are saved. If you hold firmly to the word I preached to you, otherwise you have believed in vain. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried and that he raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all appeared to me, also as to one abnormally born. For I am the least of the apostles, and do not even deserve to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet... Not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Whether then it is I or they, this is what we preach, and this is what you believed. Thanks, Troy. Paul's talking about this because the people in Corinth were even arguing about the most fundamental thing in the Bible, and that is whether Jesus came back to life, whether the resurrection was even itself true. Which just goes to show that people in church, they can argue about anything, eh? Even the most obvious and the things with, with greatest clarity. And Paul saved this argument for, for the last, the argument about the resurrection. And it makes you think, why do we work so hard to go against what is obvious in the Bible? We, we do it in our actions, we do it in our words and in our beliefs. You know, that this thing says one thing and, and we choose to do something completely different or choose to believe something completely different. See, this can say not everyone's going to make it into heaven and we just go off on a different track. This can say to honour our appearance and we just choose to do something different. This can say, it says look out for the needs of others before yourself. And we can just go off and selfishly do our own thing. So it's no surprise that even some people might think that there is no resurrection of people after they've died. And in fact, even the resurrection of Jesus isn't true. And so that's what we're going to look at today. But Paul being Paul, he doesn't just talk about that. He just jumps right in there because he sees an opportunity. And that's an opportunity to expand this topic. So instead, Paul talks about how pivotal the resurrection is to our whole belief and, and our whole faith. You see, Jesus' victory is over both sin and death, and it's the absolute source of power for us, and it's the absolute hope of this world. And in fact, our faith is meaningless without the resurrection being in there. We can pack up and go home without this 
pivotal foundation of faith that we hold on to. And it is simple. Christ died for our sins and was buried and rose again on the third day. And that is the good news that saves us and brings us life and that we get to take to others. But you know what? Paul isn't happy or satisfied just with us believing that. He he goes one step further and he outlines why we should believe that and why he believes that. And Paul points to some facts. And facts are always good when we're talking about something as amazing as resurrection. And these are some of the facts that Paul talks about. You see, if the pivotal thing to our faith hangs on this massive thing that Jesus died and then came back to life again, that's going to be pretty obvious, right? We we looked at the story of Lazarus before. He walks out from a grave a couple of days after he had died. People are going to see that. People are going to talk about that. It's going to be real obvious, eh? And so Jesus coming back to life three days after an obvious public execution that so many people saw that was seen by friends and foes alike, if that happens, that's going to be pretty obvious, right? So we aren't just believing in what Paul says. We get to check out who saw this obvious event. And Paul lists them for us. He says there's Peter, first of all. He starts off with Peter. Peter sat down and ate a meal with Jesus after Jesus came back to life again. But then there are 10 other disciples and other disciples that that were around those disciples and were with them. And by this stage, some of the disciples had even gone to their death because of what they believed in by the time Paul was writing this. And they went to their death holding on to this belief that they had seen Jesus and they'd seen him alive again. And then Paul talks about the 500 witnesses who saw Jesus all at the same time, all at once in a large group. And they were living witnesses, people who were still alive. Look, if there's 500 people who are saying something happened, if it wasn't true, you'd expect at least one of them to break ranks. At least one of them to say, nah, that didn't really happen. But that's not what happened. All 500 of them claimed that they had seen Jesus alive and in person again. And you want further proof? Who is the people who keep you most accountable? Probably your family, I'm going to say. If you try and claim something that is kind of just stretching the truth a little bit, you know what? It's your family that says, what a load of rubbish. That never happened like that. Family are good like that. Our families keep keep us honest. And ever notice who's the toughest critic? And that's brothers. Brothers are pretty tough on each other. They don't let each other get away with one iota. And Paul lists Jesus' brother James as one of the witnesses to Jesus coming back to life again. You see, James never believed his brother was the son of a God. It it, it, would be hard for him. The, The guy that he grew up with, the son of God? Really? No way. Despite miracles and uh, despite healings and all sorts of things that James saw and heard about, he thought, what a load of rubbish. This is my brother. It's not the son of God. But then a brother needs proof that really big to believe something like this. So James didn't believe that Jesus was the Son of God throughout his entire life until it came to his death. Still, he didn't believe, but his resurrection was the thing that changed James completely. Now he believes so much that he even writes the book of James that's in your Bible. That's written by his brother. Now he believes so much that that, um, when he, he... got held accountable for his beliefs. People took him to a tower up the top of the temple and they threw him out of the tower and he fell to the ground. They thought to his death. In fact, he didn't even die then. So they had to go down with clubs and rocks and beat him to death. And uh, they beat him to death in his belief that Jesus was alive again and was resurrected. So all those people saw Jesus and the resurrection became the hope of the world for, for them. And then Paul adds his own name to the list of people who had seen Jesus resurrected. Paul was talking about not when he saw Jesus physically, but when he saw him on the road to Damascus and how much that changed Paul's life. Let me tell you, when you encounter, when you see Jesus, when you realize that he's resurrected and alive and changes your life, there there is no going back. Your life is never the same again. But you know what? You don't have to take my word for it. 
we're, we're going to hear from Sam Cheng, and he's going to give us his take on this. Hey guys, Samuel Carson Chang here, and today I have a short testimony to share with you guys about myself. I was born and raised in a Christian household. Um, I knew God for a long time, and I am a Christian. But one thing that hit me was during my in, uh, intermediate school years and high school years and a little bit into my uni years was self-hate, extreme self-hate that I had for myself, where I thought that I was just completely useless, trash, ugly, fat, just untalented and just a complete waste of life. But yeah, and a lot of factors contributed to this, such as my... Um, issues at the time where there was a lot of issues that were happening in my family and I started to hate everything about myself from this. I hated my family, I hated who I was, my name, my culture, everything about myself um, and the people when people at my church, old church community found out um, I just didn't have felt love from them as well as they would constantly belittle me for what happened, you know, asking me where um, stuff that just wasn't loving to me um, and being told that I was hated by some of the people there didn't help as well. I don't think, I don't know if it's true or not, but yeah, um, there was also at school where I constantly had seeked out love, but in the end just got unrequited love that was just a waste because I try to show love to people that in the end just wasn't worth it because it wasn't people that God wanted me to love or it wasn't it was people that just wouldn't show me any sort of love at all and I would just start to hate myself even more and more and just constantly go into that mindset but in 2019 um, during my mid-year of uni it was my birthday and my mom um, went to a women's conference at MCBC and met Micah who suggested that I go to embassy and it was the best decision of my life because by going to embassy I was constantly putting myself in God's love I was constantly putting myself in his presence and God's presence truly is love I started to learn that God loves me no matter what and because of this I can't hate myself because everything that God loves is good so all of you guys just love yourself um and yeah, it was a lot of God showing me love again by going to embassy and it was through the people he put around me as well, showing me that there are people out there that can love me for being me, such as Daniel or Bonnie or Dylan or Sam or just the people at church. Like there's so many more people I could name off that just show me so much love and I just thank God so much for putting them in my life. And I just, yeah, I just, can learn to love myself again, going to Beach Mission, reaffirming my commitment to God and making a promise to myself that no matter what, I will try to love myself. And yeah, it's a very hard journey to go to try and love yourself again after having a lot of hate, but you know, God loves you. So you don't have to hate yourself because there's no reason to really hate yourself. I thank God so much for everything that he's done. And I love myself, and I can say that now. I love you guys. God loves you guys. Have a nice day. Hey, awesome, Sam. It's so good having you around church. It's so easy to see the changes that you made in your life, and you are such a good mate for others now. So just bless you heaps, and thanks for sharing your story with us. Did you hear the difference in Sam's life? In his story, you can almost hear the change from darkness to light. You, you can almost hear the change from death to life. And Sam Chang, I want to tell you that stre stretches into eternal life as well. Your whole eternity has changed from death to life. So here's Troy, uh, talking eternity with part two of our Bible reading. Thanks, Troy. So it is written. The first man, Adam, became a living being, the last Adam, a life-giving spirit. The spiritual did not come first, but the natural, and after that, the spiritual. The first man was of the dust of the earth, the second man is of heaven. As was the earthly man, so are those who are of the earth. And as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are of the earth. 
who are of heaven. And just as we have borne the image of the earthly man, so shall we bear the image of the heavenly man. I declare to you, brothers and sisters, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised, imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with, Im- with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of the sin is the law. But thanks be to God, He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. You know, those verses that Troy just read, they actually make the most sense here. You see, this is the place that resurrection makes the most sense. All of us are going to end up here. We don't like to think about it, but but we simply are. We we don't know when it's going to happen or who's next, but all of us will end up in this place. And you see, there are only two options. Either this is it, this is the end, or there is something beyond this, that there's a resurrection life. And this is why the resurrection of Jesus himself, that this is why Jesus resurrecting Lazarus and others, this is why it is just so important and so crucial to our faith. This is key to our beliefs, and this is why Troy's words make so much sense. Our physical bodies cannot inherit the kingdom of God. These dying bodies cannot inherit what will last forever. For our dying bodies must be transformed into bodies that that will never die. Our mortal bodies must be transformed into immortal bodies. But thank God, he gave us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? Because of the resurrection, we have victory over even death itself. The gospel is simply the good news about Jesus that opens up this whole new reality for us. Even death looks different because of the resurrection. And then our present circumstances need to look different because of the gospel too. Our work, our attitude, our priorities, all those things need to change. Because in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Paul uses this little big word. He uses the word so. So. Every word is in the Bible for a reason, and a little word like so is in there for a very good reason too. Verse 58 starts off, so, and and that so is referring back, and and it's really referring back to the whole book of Corinthians and what we've been learning and what we've been talking about, and and it then says the word so, or because of what you have just heard. Some versions use the word therefore, and that's what we're going to have a look at, at now. So verse 58 says this, so, or therefore, Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. So this is the culmination of the entire book of 1 Corinthians. So it is what you now need to do based on Jesus' past resurrection and your future resurrection. What should we do? Starts off by reminding us some things. Stand firm. Be strong. Be immovable. Stand your ground. 
If you want to use the old fashioned word to talk about being steadfast. We have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll. Steadfast is what it's, Paul's telling us to do. But then it says to give yourself to something. Give yourself to working for God. And what should that look like? If someone had to describe how you work for God, would it sound like this? That you give yourself fully. That you don't hold back. That you work enthusiastically. That you're abounding and excelling in your work. That it is excellent in what you do. And you know what? As a pastor, it's easy to kind of define that and, and, and look at what working enthusiastically for God looks like. But what job do you have? Yeah, you. What job did you do you have? Oh, did I hear one of you say teacher? Thank you very much for your example. I'm going to use that as an example. So let's take being a teacher as an example. How does that look like working for God? This verse defines how we turn normal work into spiritual work. And it's actually simple. And it is this simple, that you do it for him. Whatever you do, do it for the Lord. For the Lord and in the Lord. Make him your highest boss and who you want to please. And to a teacher, your highest boss says, don't leave your faith at the school gate. Always, always, it says, give yourself fully to the work of God. And that means asking, what does a follower of Jesus, who was a teacher, insert own occupation here, look like? What does a follower of Jesus as a teacher look like? You know what? I simply love what happened this week. How good is this, eh? What we've got here is over 120 masks that we're sending out to our seniors this week. And these are being made by ladies in our church. And I just want to thank Nolene, Sarah, Marie, Karen, Erin, Jan, Lisa, Joanne, anyone else that I've missed as well. Um, but we just want to thank you. This is an amazing thing that we get to do for our seniors. And the thing is, what you do for the Lord always counts. It always counts. So we just want to encourage you and thank you. So good seeing all those masks going out to our seniors, eh? I want to tell you, nothing you do for him is a waste of time or effort. When you make masks for him, it's never wasted. Your work for him is never futile, never wasted. It's never without purpose. It's never a waste of time and it's never a waste of effort. Because the resurrection changes everything. Your beliefs, your eternity, your career, your passion, your attitude, and the worth of what you do changes because of the resurrection. So, so, we're going to finish that with that word today. So, we're going to finish off with a worship song shortly, but I'd love to end with, with some questions. And, and this is really the so from the message today. I'd love you to ask these questions. First of all, how does the resurrection change your career or work? Just the stuff that you do during the week. How does the resurrection change that? And then the second question, how will I give myself fully to the work of the Lord? I'd love you to think about these two questions as we head into a time of worship. I'd love you to pray about it. So Father, we just invite you into the space, Lord. We invite you into our thoughts, into the things that we're thinking about in these next few minutes as we worship you, Lord. We long to serve you in our work and careers and what we do during the week. May we fully invite you into that. Father, we also just ask that you show us what it means to fully give ourselves to, to the work for you. Father, speak to us in this time. We want to have our ears open and our heart open. We recognize that your spirit is here in the room with us today, Lord, and we just invite you to speak to us as we, in, as we enter this time of worship. You're an amazing God. Thank you for your resurrection. Thank you for the promise of your resurrection for, for us as well. But Father, may that have an impact on what we do now. In Jesus' name, amen.
How does the resurrection change my career and work? How will I give myself fully to the work of the Lord? Let's worship God together. In the darkness we were away Without hope, without light Till from heaven you came running There was mercy in your eyes To fulfill the law and prophets To a virgin came the word From a throne of endless glory To a cradle in the dirt We just really want to thank you for joining us today. We hope as you think through these couple of questions, they're, they're going to come up on your screen shortly. Uh, how does the resurrection change my career or work or what I do during the week? And how will I give myself fully to the work of the Lord? We'd love you just to take a few minutes and just talk about that with, with each other as you sit around in, in your lounge. 
Hey, we really appreciate your feedback. If you want to send us an email, uh, if you just want to jump online, citybat, www.citybaptist.org.nz slash respond, um, that there's, you can just send us a message through there. We love your photos too, so send us your photos of what your kids have done today. Um, send us your photos of, of you sitting around church. We'd really appreciate that. It's a great encouragement for us. Hey, the resurrection is the most crucial part of the good news of Jesus Christ. That might be something that you want to respond to. It might be something that you've realized let, you've let slip in your life. We'd love you just to get in contact with us and, and tell us about that. It is the most important thing that you discover in this life. So never stop pursuing that. Never give up. We just encourage you to, to keep going. I'd love just to pray for you this morning. So Father, I just want to thank you that you know each person who is listening to this today, Lord, that, that you love them, that you care for them, that your son came and died and rose again and, and showed yourself to so many people to, to show us how real that is. Father, we want to thank you that changes everything, that changes our eternity, uh, that changes what happens to, to me when I die, Lord. Uh, but most of all, you are keen for it to change how we act and react now, Lord. May again and again, as we come across things in this life, Lord, may we invite your gospel to address those things and to allow that to respond in our actions, to line up with what your gospel says about those things. Father, thank you that you care for each person, Lord. Uh, we, we just pray your blessings on, on us as a church, Lord. Look after our church community. Look after our local community in Monaco, Lord. We cry out for our country, Lord, for New Zealand, for Aotearoa as we head into some big decisions about our governments, Lord. We pray that you look after us. We pray that you look after this world in this time, Lord. May you be alive and active, Lord. May our faith be so real at this time that, that it affects us and that it affects those around us. Father, thank you for your love for us. Thank you that Jesus died and rose again, and we celebrate that today. May we celebrate that well. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Here's those questions. Why don't you get talking? Why don't you ask the person next to you? Have a good week.